this is a good one. This is from the, the modal shop. Uh, we're going to be looking at the drop, text, uh, drop test fixture, model DTF2. Uh, again, that's the modal shop. And Dirk is going to be joined right now by, uh, by Kevin Rogers of the modal shop. And take it away, guys. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm here with uh, Kevin Rogers from the modal shop, as Mike said. This is an interesting piece of equipment we're going to look at today. And it's interesting because of how it tests. And this uses acoustics to test of all things. So, um, Kevin, uh, welcome to the show and tell Thank us you. a little bit about what this is. Okay. Um, again, this is what we call our drop test fixture. And what we do is we use it for 100% uh, defect detection, so 100% part inspection. And the method we do, is, we do it by is called resonant acoustic inspection. Okay. And how does that work, basically? Okay. In this case, what we're doing is we're going to drop the part a short distance onto the force So sensor. it comes down the chute here, right? Exactly. Okay. And as the part impacts the sensor, it begins to resonate. Okay. And we pick up the resonance by the microphone here that you just pointed out. And what we do is we plot that on the screen, and we're looking for shifts in the resonant frequency peaks due to things like cracks, changes in hardness level, uh, missing features, those kind of defects. Okay. So basically what's happening is when a metal part hits this, it, it rings kind of like a bell. Right? Exactly. That's and, exactly. And you're actually just measuring that, that frequency response, all the different nodes uh, within that frequency response that mm -hmm. are unique to that particular that, that particular part. Yes. And so, so almost anything can change that, that resonant frequency. Yes. And, and you know, what we're using it for is to look for those defects that the customer does not want in their parts to, uh, to, in using the resonance to find those. So, so show us how this works then. Okay. Um, so one of the examples I have is that I have, uh, I have three parts here. These are valve spools. And I have one that is good. I have one that is cracked. And I have one that's missing uh, this end feature, as you can see. And so what we do, um, these are aluminum, so I'm going to, we'll slide them down, they'll impact the sensor, okay. and we'll show the response on the screen, and we're looking for changes in those resonant frequencies compared to what we've taught it is a known good part. Okay. So I'll give those to you. To so I just, I just slide these down the, uh, I just mm -hmm. slide these down the chute, right? Yes. Okay. So this one is the one that's cracked. Okay. So again, we're looking for changes in the resonant frequency, as you can see it so shifts out of the the green boxes. Okay, so in the screenshot, what we see is we see several peaks there, and those are the peaks related to uh, to that particular device that just that we just pinged, right? Yes, yeah, so we've taught it what's what should be a good okay. response. And I think we actually we've got a little video of what this kind of looks like in uh, slow motion. Uh, if, Chris, if you can run that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it hits. Actually, can you run that again, Chris? And maybe you can stop that in midair if that's possible. Or not. It just disappears. Um, so there we go. Yeah, so basically we see it impacting the, the pressure transducer here, which triggers the microphone, right? Yes, it, takes, it tells the system to start Okay, so while this up. thing is then in the air, it's already bounced off, mm -hmm. and it's in the air, now the microphone is picking up everything. Exactly. Okay. All right, let's run another part here. Now, this is one that's missing. Uh, if we look at our, our gauge cam here, we can see it's missing. <laughs> It's missing a bit off the end. See the difference between those there? Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to run this one down. Mm -hmm. So you can see the significant shift All right, yeah. on the screen here where those peaks do not match up to the green bands. So if it fails any one of those green bands, the part okay. will be deemed defective. And this obviously is the good one. Mm -hmm. we run that. Sure enough, it... And if we look at the screenshot, sure enough, the peaks are right within your green bands there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what we were looking at here, this this was a cracked part. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we also uh, we have a what a heat treater part, right? Yes. Um, so in order to switch to a different part, all I have to do is stop the program, and then just load the file for the other one. And again, we've already um, we've already established what is a known good part on this. Now, how do you um, how do you train uh, how do you train a part? How do you get this to recognize what a good part is? Um, what we would typically do is run through, um, say, several hundred known good parts, those that have uh, passed a separate inspection, and teach it and overlay that data to look for uh, differences between the known good and the known bad. Okay. So you just run several hundred parts or, or whatever? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, just and typically we have some defect examples okay. that we'd run through there, too. Okay. So I just I loaded the other file for the, uh, the washers, and I just hit start. And what I have here are two washers um, and here I'll show you the washers that you can't tell by eye which is which okay. but I have two washers that are um, of a proper heat treating level and I have two that are not 
Okay. And they've been and yeah, visually uh, overly I'm, heat treated, actually. Okay. So I'm looking at these, and I can't see a difference between them. Okay. okay. So I will give these to you, and the properly heat treated ones will go to the good side, and the improperly okay. will Okay. So I'll deviate. just roll this down the chute here. So that obviously was the good one. Mm -hmm. All right. And we'll take another one. And that was a good one. So that must mean I've got two bad ones left here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty smart that way. All right. So again, you can see on the screen where we have a significant shift in the resonant frequencies. And again, if we fail any one of those, we fail okay. the part. All right. And so the last one obviously is going to fail too. Then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is this is people who use your equipment, are they normally using it for, for sorting or are they using it for, for pass-fail on parts? Typically, how is this being used? Typically, it's for defect detection. Okay. Um, we do have the ability to um, separate parts. Um, I actually have an example here where sometimes materials get mixed up, sometimes parts get mixed up, and it's hard to identify uh, one from the other. So in this case, I, I brought an example um, of an application that works very well. I have uh, several 8-millimeter screws here and some are 20 millimeters long, some are 16 millimeters long. If they became mixed, we could run them through the machine and look at the, the signature of the part and, and teach it that I want these to go this direction to the pass side, these to go to the fail side. Okay. Now, actually, uh, speaking of sorting, you told me an interesting story uh, yesterday when you came up about uh, you had a customer that called you. Uh, they, were, they were pretty frantic because they had an expensive mistake. Tell, yes. tell us about that. Yes, we had a customer who makes bearings and they had mixed uh, approximately 40,000 of bearing type A and bearing type B. They were uh, the identical dimensions and appearance, but they were two different materials. Okay. Uh, so rather than scrap the whole lot, they used our system to uh, separate the two types of parts and because the, the, they had different resonance signatures. And, and what, what do these bearings cost each? Uh, about $2 a piece. Okay, so this, this is 80 grand, of, 80 grand of, of scrap? Yes. Okay, so they just took them and ran them through the machine. We, okay. we, we had, say, uh, a 50 that we ran through the, of a known type, okay. and then any deviation outside of that would have been the other type. So they just ran them through and they were able to s s sort save them the out entire and, and save the entire lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. But how quickly does this run, run parts? Um, this one will run parts about uh, one per second. Okay. All right. Um, actually, go ahead and bring up the program for, for sorting that. We've we okay. got a little bit of time here. Let's take sure. a Sure. I will that. give these to you. All right. And then, again, it's uh, once you've established the uh, the criteria, you just hit File, Open Project, and it'll save that. All right. So this is really easy to use. I mean, pretty much any operator, once this has been trained, any operator can bring this thing up and just a matter of just feeding the parts through, right? Okay. Exactly. All right. So I, I'm just kind this of randomly. Cool. Oops. Sorry. That's okay. All right. So that one, that one failed, so that was mm -hmm. obviously a, a short one then. Yes, so okay. in this case we've got the 16 millimeter screws going to the fail side, okay. and we're trying to pick out the 20 millimeter screws. And that's a short one, okay, there mm -hmm. it goes, all right. And I can see them, as I'm so this one should pass. And it looks like this one should pass. Sure enough, and that looks like a shorter one, so. And there's four millimeter difference on these, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, we're using this to sort okay. for gross dimensional defects. Okay. So basically what we're talking about is, is a drop test. Now I know that you have another machine that's similar to this for parts that you don't really want to drop. Uh, basically it's the same thing about a conveyor, a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. And what's yes. to do like kind of pings them? Is that the, is that the idea? That's exactly like right. Yeah. Reading glass. <laughs> okay. People call it the ping tester. The ping yes. tester. Okay. So um, what it does is it impacts it uh, with a, an electric hammer. Um, just slightly, and okay. you know, it's not going to do any damage. Uh, but it's also a 100% inspection method. So it's on a conveyor belt, the operator places the parts on the conveyor, the machine does the testing, the sorting, and uh, you know, pushes off the good parts and lets okay. the bad go off the end. Uh, we, we, had a, we had a question come in. Uh, you can go ahead and put that up, uh, put that up Chris. Um, and there we go. Uh, the question is, uh, you mentioned heat treating. Uh, can you detect a part that has been improperly heat treated? What we looked at here, mm -hmm. I guess, was one that was not heat treated versus one that was. I guess they're looking at something that's been heat treated but maybe not completely? Yes, um, we can find uh, parts that have been properly heat treated. Again, what, what we do is take several hundred that are of the proper value and we look for deviations outside of that. Anything that affects the mass, the stiffness, or the damping is what affects the resonant peaks. Um, and for the heat treating level, we can typically find values um, exceeding a Rockwell C scale of five. So if your range was between 40 and 50, 
once you go above the 50, we can separate those out and below 40, okay. for example. Okay, that's not bad. So what, um, what, what's kind of the cost range on this? Um, this is in the, the low 40s. Okay. And then the fully automatic system would be in the, the low 70s. Okay, well, Kevin Rogers, the Motor Shop, thanks for bringing this by. Interesting piece of equipment. Thanks for having me. Okay, sure. Back to you, Mike. Well, there it is. Yes, the Motor Shop drop test fixture model DTF2 from the Motor Shop. Thank you, uh, Dirk. Thank you, uh, Kevin Rogers, for doing that. Kevin, great guy. Uh, despite being a University of Cincinnati, <laughs> Cincinnati Bearcat <laughs> fan and uh, alumnus. Great guy. Yeah, good, Despite that. Good time. Well, I'm a Rutgers guy. Come on. I went to Rutgers. Very competitive football team. Basketball. They beat us all the time. Anyway.